everybody. Hey. Welcome back in our new uh, living room slash dining room. I it, don't know. It looks like a military <laughs> compound. I like a, Not compound, but like a military camp. I feel like I'm ready for battle. We bought something new. I don't know if you remember a couple, a lot of vlogs ago when we were dealing with the wind because we love the wind so much. We needed something to block it. <laughs> so we had ended up getting the walls and we finally got them. We picked them up a couple days ago. This is the first time putting it together and I really like it. It's blocking the wind. It is very windy here. It's coming from this direction and this direction. So this helps out so much. So Matter of much. fact, it helps all the way to right here. Yes. So we can stand right here and still have no wind, but you stand right here and you're feeling the wind. Yeah. And the reason we went ahead and threw these up is because when we got up here, it was kind of gusty. Oh, it's still windy. But, but we, we did jinx what were you about to say i was gonna say we also needed to make sure that they work because if they didn't we need to send them back i was gonna say that we survived the storm because oh, we yeah, stayed we at jonathan's yeah. and that's how we dragged him out here again the downside is he has to go to work tomorrow yeah. so he will only be here tonight okay. since he is here we are going to recreate something that we have not it's going created down. Created Round since two. It was messed up. Yeah. Round two. <laughs> We're making the whole chicken. Now, we have successfully made the whole chicken at camp. I made it at home a lot. We made it at camp for a Thanksgiving vlog. We'll put that in the link below. And we'll put the link of the meteor chicken. We already have a massive fire going because we are cooking the chicken in the Dutch oven over hot coals. So we need to get it going right away. And where are we camping at? Jonathan, what have we dubbed this area, bro? So this is what we call the cul-de-sac. We're near the Iron Fork Creek, and this is one of the feeders that goes into, and the Washita Trail is right on top of that mountain ridge up there. So if you saw us when we were driving up here, we came off the main forest road, came up here, and we are probably at like... 1,400 feet. We're at, we're at 1,400 feet? Yep. Yeah. So we're at 1,400 feet, but the peaks behind is 2,000, over 2,000 feet is where the Washtenaw Trail is up there. We've done three or four vlogs here. We love this spot. We haven't been here in over a year. Matter of fact, I forgot how much I love this spot until we came back. Because it is, it gets us giddy, doesn't it, Jonathan? I love it. I love it here. Yeah, this is one of my favorite spots. I forgot how much I love this section of Arkansas. Oh, guys, and I, I we have never talked about it because we've never vlogged it because we've always been in a hurry. If you want to know, the most beautiful drive in our opinion in Arkansas. You start at Danville, you take Highway 80 going west, you hit 71, you go south, and then you cut back and do 28 on the way back, heading towards Rover. And if you want a very unique experience, and it's all, it's all highway, it reminds us of Idaho and Montana. Yeah. We saw scenes that look like the backdrop of Idaho, Montana. There was like a ranch that had a, a house at the bottom of a mountain on this ranch. And I was like, man, I've seen that out west in Montana. Yeah. Like it looks like Montana and it's not really popular because everybody does the pig trail or Highway 7. I don't, if you get a chance, just do it. it. You can ride a motorcycle on it. You can do a car. You don't need anything great. It's just highways, but it is gorgeous. And there's less vehicles on it since it's not so popular. I mean, we saw maybe what, 10 vehicles on 80? It is one of the most remote drives I've ever done in Arkansas. But Kelly's over here, man in the fire, Angel Princess. How's it going? Good, I'm sure you get the chickens going. Well, we're gonna have some Brussels sprouts. Some coconut rice. So these are the two chickens we got. What's really nice is they've been in the refrigerator for a few days. I think we only stayed one full day, two nights, one day at Jonathan's, and they were refrigerated. They're still refrigerated, so they're not frozen at all. That's gonna make it really easy to work with these. And by the way, we forgot to tell you, we picked up the phone that day on the last vlog. Looks brand new. Look at that. Looks nice. So what we need to do is we need to remove these out of the bags, remove the giblets out, and just like hold it like a baby okay. and rinse it off. <laughs> and then I'll have a plate for you to bring it back up to and we'll put paper towels on it. Okay. All right, chickens are all clean. And now we're gonna work on the next part. We've got some butter. I'm gonna melt in the skillet here. 
Fantastic. Now Jonathan is gonna help me with the yuckies. This is a, a poultry blend. I should have got two. I don't know why I got one. But we've got some thyme, some sage, some rosemary. And what I'm gonna do is basically half it. This bunch will go in yours, Jonathan, and this bunch will go in ours. Okay. Now I do want to point out, if you if you can tell, this Ozark Trails is the exact cast iron that we used to have before our trailer was stolen. This is the lodge. They're the same width, which is what twelve. Yeah, twelve inches. 12 inches, but this lodge is probably about an inch deeper. Maybe two, maybe an inch and a half deeper. You can tell. So they're the they're the same width though. And it did have a different effect on those pizzas that we cooked the other night on the Maumel River. Jonathan's was kind of crispy and ours was kind of doughy. Still it tasted they both tasted good, but ours was a little bit more it was it was spongy. It wasn't doughy, it was more spongy and his was a little more crunchy. All right, honey, what's up next? I have a lemon I'm going to cut in half. And one will go on ours and one will go on Jonathan's. And trying to melt this butter here. Once that melts, we can continue. We'll put some salt and pepper on there. Got to get a little sniff. I might put this in my clothes tub if it don't poke a hole in anything. That's a good old sniffing stick. That is really red too. Mm -hmm. If you're new to the channel, because we know that there's many new people and thank y'all so much for subscribing, but we do want to say, what is a sniffing stick? It's just an old thing that started with Kelly and I and all it is is a cedar that we find out in the wood woods. And oh, red cedar smells so Here, good. Since are dirty, will you pick that chicken up? Get on all the... Uh bottom here you finally ran out of that I ran out. Ah. all right you can just put it in and kind of swirl it around yep and then we'll do the same thing with ours okay yep Perfect. looks like it's bright dead <laughs> it is all right, now we got some butter. So what I'm gonna do, Jonathan, don't touch it just yet, cause it is hot. It'll get cold as I pour it on here though. Watch out. So see if you can, you can touch it, see if it's hot or not. What you're gonna do is just rub all that butter all over the whole front part. Don't worry about the underside, just the top, the legs, the wings. Yep, just massage it in like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> Once you do one, I'll come behind you. Okay. With the salt and pepper. One thing I want to add is there will be no appetizers tonight. So mm. all our energy is focused on, guys. What is it focused on? The chickens. The chickens. Well, that's y'all's focus because I have to make coconut rice and Brussels sprouts. Okay. Mm. Hold on. Alright, so it's very important that the chicken is in the center. Okay. So I'm gonna let you move it in the center. Okay. Now, let me get where you are, Jonathan. I got a lemon. Sorry. And we're just gonna squirt some lemons. Now I've got a whole clove of garlic and I want to see how many are in here because we want quite a bit. Because what makes this tasty is that we're going to throw these garlics in there without even peeling them. And they're going to cook and get really nice and mushy and then you can just take a, you'll pull, the garlic will just come out of the skin and you can take a piece of chicken with the garlic. Oh, it's so good. Even them out. Because Jonathan's going to get a whole chicken to himself. Jonathan, you're getting a whole chicken to yourself? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why we got... Dang, bro. What we're going to do with the garlic is we're going to scatter it around. Get down in there. And 
And I'm gonna also add a little bit more oil on the sides on top of the garlic, like this. Because the oilier, the better, for sure. Okay, now that is done. Let's cover them up. All right, do we have any calls? Perfect. Do y'all see this big shovel that Jonathan has? So when oh, we were making- perfect. <laughs> Dude, that's what we needed for the pizzas. Like no lie. The thing is I had it in my truck the whole time. Shut up. I forgot <laughs> all about it. Those are perfect coals right there, boy. So this is actually Jonathan's girlfriend's shovel. Erica, we have your shovel right now, so thank you. She's having to work right now, and when we did the last vlog, she was having to do some classes, I think. That's what she was... Yeah. So she what, she hasn't been able to uh, come with us on any of our camping adventures. Right. We miss you, Erica. Just want you to know, and your shovel... Can Jonathan have it? Actually, can we have it? We need one. Where I've never seen... Put that? I've never seen a shovel that long, and it adds extra length. Look at that. Gosh, this is so nice. Ooh! I got, I'm getting burned. Let's check it in 30. Okay. So you always want a whole bunch of sticks that are about the width of your wrist. That helps you make coals faster. If you go any larger and you got large logs, it's going to take forever for those large logs to and start producing coals, coals like around that. The, around the and you want to start your fire with small twigs. That will start a small pile of embers. Then you'll start going a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger pieces of uh, wood. What Jonathan collected while we were setting up camp is great. Like this right here, that is a great piece. Anything larger than that, your coals aren't going to be being created fast enough. Look at that. Solid. Solid, Jonathan. Proud of you, boy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Angel Princess, what's going on next? I'm looking for my rice. Smushing our breakfast. Looking for the rice. Looking for the, here it is. People might not know, but Arkansas is the number one producer of rice in North America. Because of East Arkansas, it's really low, flat, right along the Mississippi River, and they've created a lot of rice fields over a hundred year period. And this rice that we're using is actually an Arkansas farm rice family owned pretty cool on our way up to missouri we were driving through a lot of arkansas rice fields The chicken does need to cook for an hour. I said we're gonna check it in 30. So I'll start preparing the rice after we check it in 30 minutes because that will let me know where we stand for the rest of the timing on the chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and season the Brussels. I'm not baking them just yet, but we're gonna do olive oil, balsamic, And salt and pepper, of course. Now, when I get ready to bake these, I'm gonna mix it all together so we can kind of freshen up what's been sitting on the bottom. It's been 30 minutes. We're just gonna take a peek so I know where we stand here with the amount of coals we've got going. We have fresh coals brewing as well. And we can smell the chicken cooking. It smells really good. Look at that. It's not a meteor, y'all. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I bet ours is not going to be as brown on the top because it's deeper. Yeah, ours doesn't look as brown. Oh, look at that sizzling down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I say no more new coals on yours unless you've got a bunch of ash. Okay. Maybe a few new ones, not a lot. Um, and I say just add some on top of ours, and okay. then we'll go for... Um, I'll do 30 more minutes and now I'm going to start cooking the rice. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of butter in my little skillet here. I'm going to let this butter melt all the way and then we'll add the rice in. Rice is going in. Now if I had a correct sieve to strain the rice, I probably would have done that. When you run the rice through 
cold water until no white comes through the bottom it's gonna make it where it's not very sticky so if you want sticky rice don't do that but if you don't want a sticky rice you need to strain it until there's no white running through the water but I don't really have that I used to do that at the house when I had that but I don't have the sieve anymore so it'll be fine it's gonna turn out great and we're just gonna cook it like that so I'm gonna turn it around in this butter until it becomes golden and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients rice is good and golden we've got some water i've got frozen so i gotta break it coconut milk not frozen i say frozen but and some salt bring it to a boil and i need to cover it once it comes to a boil but i want to make sure that all these chunks of coconut are melted while i'm waiting for that to come to a boil let's get the oven going and I'm gonna try to get the oven at least to, I'm gonna say 350. I don't wanna go too hot with it. I don't wanna burn the bottom. And I've already stirred these up. They're really good and coated and soaked in now because I let it sit for a minute. It smells good. What do you think, babe? This is gonna be one of the greatest meals of my life. Still waiting on the milk coconut here to melt, but I'm also gonna go ahead and throw, on, throw in a cinnamon stick. So that's gonna go in as well as it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna reduce it slightly and then cover it with a lid. Our oven is at 400. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. I'm gonna place these in. And let me check the timer for the chicken because that might be when I check that. So we have 20 minutes left, which is great. I'm gonna check it intermittently, stir it up if I need to, and uh, we'll see what happens. I turned the tip down, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, our sides are done. Rice is done. Ooh, Smell good, it? that smells real good. The Brussels, I believe, are done. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> doesn't those look good? Yeah. Ooh, I love it. Love that little char. Oh, mm. the balsamic adds yeah. a little spice. It burns your That's nose. You know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be so good. We're going to keep that warm because I think Jonathan's chicken is done. Do you want to cut into it, you said? Yeah, sure. That looks perfect. Look at that. Let's see if it's done. Here? Yeah. Cut it in the dead center. Oh. How's it look? It's juicy. Man, I think I would give ours just a few few I more do minutes. Too. I do too. His Dutch oven is shallower than ours. So yeah, we need more. But that doesn't mean we can't just go ahead and gnaw into his. Does it? Whatever. No, we can go ahead and do that. We've decided we're gonna go ahead and start eating because it is like 7.30. So we're gonna do the first chicken and see how it goes. Do you want legs or wings, Jonathan? Not at all. I want a wing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Angel Princess, a plate. Now hold on before you leave, because we got to get Jonathan some of this amazing garlic that's just floating around in here. Go and get him a couple pieces. If you want more, come back. Okay. And do you want some breast? Yes. So this is going to be Kelly's plate, because she wanted a wing. Go ahead and put that up, Jonathan. We have Brussels and the rice. Look at that dish, y'all. That is uptown high rent. Everything looks so good. Mm. Time to eat.
Good morning, everybody. It is beautiful blue sky. I don't know if you can see that behind me. But I did make my biscuits this morning and I did not buy buttermilk. So I just substitute with regular milk and it turned out fine. But Jonathan has to leave us. You know, I'm sad. I don't want to leave. It's such a nice day and it is pretty cool campsite. So he has to go to work. That's why we're sure we didn't know if we get to see him as much. But I think we're, we're working it out. Is that good coffee? Oh, so good coffee. Oh, we ate all the food last night and we still woke up <laughs> and we were hungry this morning. Y'all asked what do we do with leftovers? We didn't have leftovers. We ate mm -hmm. it all. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we were still hungry when we woke up this morning. We were all hungry. Yeah. Man. It's because we burned a lot of calories sleeping, I guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, it was really cold last night. Yeah. Well, I was warm in my bed. Well, let's do the old all family right. bye-bye. Let's follow Here Jonathan to his truck. Come on, Jonathan. Family bye-bye. <laughs> Wherever you go. Whatever you do. Now you're making me want to hear that song. It's a good song. And we don't have phone service. And we'll be right here waiting for you. Bye bye. Bye. Be careful driving. I will. Bye, Jonathan. Bye, Cody. Have a good day at work. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll hold down soon. the fort. Okay. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> well, he's gone. We hate that Jonathan left. We wish he could be here right now because we're about to go explore the Iron Fork area that this no-name creek flows into. When we drove in yesterday, y'all might have seen it on the drone. Kelly, how gorgeous was that water? Oh my gosh, so pretty. So blue. So we're gonna go see what we can find down there. I was not expecting to find a little fire ring right here. We haven't been over here in a long time, but we tried to camp here. We discovered this area and then I don't remember why. Was it too grown up or? I think that there's actually been a controlled burn through here because look how clear it is. Yeah, because I feel like it was grown up with all the little sticky vines. It looked more like that over there. Yeah, because there was, or maybe this just got flooded. Well, then that would have cleared out too. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, there's plenty of flat area. Obviously not for our trailer now, but uh, we could have backed in right there, looks like. We might actually think about revisiting this spot for camping purposes. Ready to keep going? that we wish there was a camping spot by this waterway. And lo and behold, hello, camping spot. Man. Wow, okay. Now we gotta get out and check out this water. Have we not checked this one before? No. Or was there just no water? I'm starting to think that maybe there wasn't a camping spot here and somebody made this. Are you sure? I'm, I'm just saying, I could be wrong, but what? let's go see. So it is plenty big enough, we can get all our gear in here for sure and then wow look at the water why are you standing like that this is so cool this is beautiful love this love this spot babe hey gum this is nice I will have to say that whenever the trees start having foliage, I wonder if there's a way we could charge a trailer up there. Uh, I mean, we could stay three three days now yeah. with those new batteries. That's true. I'm gonna go back up here and check out the area. Yeah, we could easily just back in right there and we could put the tent, the small tent over here, or even over there. Right here somewhere would work. Oh, so pretty. Love it, love it. Can we camp here? Yeah. You want to move camp right now? No. <laughs> we got too much stuff set up. Now we have to. I'll keep heading up river.
pretty back here. Yeah. Just. It's just to me, it's kind of weird how cleared out that road is, and then you like get to this. Yeah. So I'm gonna walk over here and check it out. Ha! Oh. Yeah, just a little bit. So do y'all see this little drop right there? That little bit of drop. In the Washita's, if you ever look, anywhere where there's a ridge and the waterway is cutting through a ridge, so there's a part of the ridge there, there's a part of the ridge there, and the water cut through, there will always be little bitty waterfalls, sometimes really big waterfalls in that area. So this spot has some of that rock up at an angle, how layers got pushed up just chewed right through it. I think we're just gonna turn back around because it's not really worth for us to go through that just to keep driving. Back out on the main road, and you remember just a minute ago when I was talking about layers, and that's where little falls occur, where there was a layer of, of the Washita rocks that go across and connect over there. Look at this little water feature. today we're about to head up the mountain we're losing the creek so we're just gonna turn around and head back to camp see you there back at camp and this spot is just as beautiful it's more of an open area it's one of the open floor concept plans <laughs> our little creek is still pretty Now I think we're gonna maybe try to get in, no, not maybe, I know. We're gonna get in a workout since we have a lots of room. got out of the shower Cody's in there right now and all I have to say is best shower ever we have been in tons of showers campgrounds Airbnbs and this is still our favorite shower hands down I'm not just saying that pick you up a Jolka shower howdy y'all and even if you don't get the double tent you can get the single one that's fine but I'm just saying, you live on the road full time, you have to have one of these. So it is the Jolka hot water system. This is the hot water heater. It's a portable tankless hot water heater. So as long as you have a creek, which we're using right now, you have endless hot water. It is powered by our propane. That is how the water heats up but to run the pump right now we have the pump down in this beautiful clean creek we have our four patriots portable power bank 
and you should pick up one of these as well. You can just get the small one because this is easy to tote around up and down rocks to the creek, whatever you need. If you're looking for any of these items I just listed, except for the propane tank cylinder, you can go under the description of our video and we have the links listed below. So you just click on it, it'll take you to their website and you can purchase these items. I'm telling you, it's, I could not be living out here without that. It is amazing. Anyway, we're gonna wait for Cody to get done showering and we can start dinner. Kelly was right. That was one of the hands down best showers I've had in a long time. And it was because of the water quality. Last week at Mall Mill, the water was good, but it wasn't that good. Cody said the water was not that good. You can tell because whenever I would get out of the shower, my hair dried. It would dry super, um, I don't know, I can't explain it. It was really frizzy looking. So that's how I could tell the water quality was not that great. But Angel Francis, what are you making tonight? Tonight, I'm going to be making the roasted vegetables with a, a Parmesan polenta.
Good morning. It is a little wet out here this morning. I did not expect for it to rain. Neither of us did. We knew the clouds were rolling in last night, but we had a little bit of rain. She told me this morning it had a point five point zero five zero point zero five inches at a forty percent chance. So me, I'm thinking, oh, it's probably not. It's just going to be cloudy. No, when it says that in Arkansas, it means it's going to rain. <laughs> I Especially when that. you're you're up in the foothills of the actually not the yeah. foothills, you're up in the mountains. Yeah. Because uh, probably in like Mina, where we're real close to. It probably, Mina, didn't rain at all. probably didn't rain at all but when you start getting up into the mountains it actually out of the valleys up into the mountains you'll actually get more condensation especially since the moisture is being pushed up against the ridge and then it cools a little fast and we'll start dropping rain even if it's not supposed to rain it'll rain up here but this morning kelly's killing it kelly's making one of my favorite dishes in the world Right there. Breakfast pizza. That's mine, obviously, because my egg's already cooked. Cody's is in the oven right now. Well, we were hoping for a beautiful sunny day. Maybe it will come out here in a little bit. If you noticed, I saw with y'all on the drone, it looked like it's kind of breaking out. The It's coming from the west heading east, and it looks like it's getting a little party. Party? Party, party. like there's some blue sky. There's some blue sky right in there. We're going to go on a little excursion later. That's why I wanted to clear up. I want to take y'all to a set of waterfalls that Kelly and I found last time we were here. And it's a bushwhacking situation, but it's real pretty. And some of you asked in one of our last vlogs, what is bushwhacking? Bushwhacking is basically where you just, you bushwhack through the woods. But if, bushwhacking means there's no trail. So you're just kind of making your way through the woods anywhere that you can. Usually you have a hatchet or a machete or something to cut down which cody's big knife that he has will work great for that to cut down any limbs any of the little um sticky i don't know what they're called but they're the green vines that have little thorns all over them those are definitely prominent around here so bushwhacking around here would require to cut those down which those need to go anyway i think those are an invasive species to begin with and what kelly's talking about is we got them right around camp see this Those things, I think, are invasive species. I'm not sure. And they'll attach to other bushes, small trees, and suffocate them, pull them down over time. They really need to go, to be honest with you. They kill a lot of things. They got little bl uh, blackberries on them, like this. And the birds eat those, and they'll poop it out anywhere. Next thing you know, you got those things growing everywhere. So this is an example of kind of like bushwhacking. Do you see all this? This would be us bushwhacking through that to go through. You don't cut down trees or anything like that. You just clear that right there. All, not all of it, that would be maintenance, but just clearing that. And um, last on the last vlog, we were telling you about ticks and that we saw a ton of ticks at the last camp spot we were at. We have not seen any ticks here at all. None, we worked out, no ticks came on the mat. We've been frolicking all through these woods, no ticks. So it's just weird. I feel like maybe they are more prominent in different areas. I'm not sure. Oh, that's that money. Yeah. yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. So this pizza has spinach, mozzarella, grape tomatoes, egg, bacon. That's pretty much it. And there's no sauce. The actual sauce on mine is the egg breaking apart. Yes. That becomes the sauce for it. Getting ready to go on our little hike and Cody is preparing with his knife. Yeah, bushwhacking ready. Which we're actually gonna need probably. So last time we were here, we went exploring. Well, y'all and I did. Kelly stayed here if y'all remember. We explored up. Well, later that uh, weekend when we stayed a little bit longer, Kelly and I went down and found this waterfall. It's not a really clear path. Actually, there is no path unless you find game trails. And that's where everything's kind of growing in, and that's the path we'll take. But we found a really awesome waterfall. It's not nothing crazy tall, but it's pretty cool. We're finally getting Kelly out bushwhacking. My angel princess is coming with me on an adventure. Ow, Ow I'm sorry. I just want to work out. She's getting muscle. She's getting big and strong. Actually, I won't get any muscle because something about my body type, I just cannot gain muscle mass. 
I even at one point in time was drinking 60 grams of protein shake after I worked out every day. Well, four days a week. And I still would not gain any muscle mass. So, I mean, I get toned, but I won't get big. Sorry, Angel Princess. That's okay. Let me do it so I get off the oppressor. Oh, that is the important thing. Kelly found out that women get osteoporosis if they don't weight train. Well, as you age, you just lose bone density, especially women. And if weight training helps not to reverse that process, but to either make it not, you not lose bone density or slow the process down. So it is actually good for your bones for women to weight train. It's not just about gaining muscle mass. And you burn more calories weight training than cardio. I don't know what this is, but babe, what's that smell like? Perfume. It smells like gardenia, but it's not. It just smells like a perfume. It, it is so really good, pretty. Floral perfume. Mm, I wish I had that essential oil. I love oh, spring. Yeah. We're going to go across over here. So now we're going to start bushwhacking. So right here, we found a game trail and we're going to be following this game trail until we need to turn off. Here's the waterfall. Like I said, it's not very tall, but it's awesome looking. So like I was saying yesterday, in the Washita's, when you find where a waterway cuts through a layer of rock, there's usually gonna be some water feature there. On the majority of waterways in the Washita's, they follow a fault between two layers of rock, kind of like that back there. That's a creek that's probably only runs when there's rain, but then it hits into this feeder and goes. So like the Washita River, Caddo, Probably 90% of its path is along two layers of rock like that. It doesn't cut through very often. So when you do find it, you find this. And you can see the layer right here. I'm gonna dub this little waterfall Angel Princess Falls. I thought you were gonna say Odin. No. <laughs> we'll name it after Angel Princess. I like it. I like it too. That's all we have for you on this one. But we'll catch you on the other. Bye.